Hey guys, welcome to part seven. In this video, we're going to add a camera to the scene and then use this to compose the shot for the final render. So first let's delete the camera that came with the new project and we'll hide the plane. Press shift A and add a new camera. And it's positioned where the 3D cursor is, pointing at a strange angle. And we can see this with the camera preview there. So from the object properties tab, or by pressing N and using the item tab at the top, we can adjust the location and rotation of the camera. And you can see here I'm using 90 degrees for the Z and I can use minus 90 to flip the camera in the opposite direction. Now I can look through the camera and then I can make adjustments from this panel very easily and then see how this looks. Another way to do this is to separate our workspace into two halves. Then we can press T to hide the toolbar and N to hide the additional tabs. Let's switch over to rendered view and we can then look through the camera. We can then leave this here as a preview of our final composition and then adjust the camera on the left side of the screen. And we can move and rotate this however we want and we get to see a real time preview of exactly how our final composition is going to look. Another way to adjust the camera is to go to the view tab and select lock camera to view. And you can see if I move the camera on the right half of the screen, nothing happens. That's because that setting is for the left half of the screen specifically. So I need to bring this menu out and do the same thing for the right half. And you can see as I start to orbit, I'm actually moving the camera within the scene. And this is a really good way to try out different angles and see what works. But just remember, once you've positioned your camera like this, uncheck that option just so you don't move it by mistake. We can then make some final adjustments to the camera, whether it's moving the camera in the viewport or editing the values in the object properties panel. And then once that's done, I'm going to show my plane again. Now with the plane selected, I'm going to tab into edit mode and select that back edge and extrude this along the Z axis. And I'm going to use this to make a backdrop. Next, I'm going to select this bottom edge and add a bevel. I'm going to increase the number of segments so I have a nice curve to my backdrop. I can then tab into objects mode, right click and select shade smooth. And hopefully you can see how useful this preview on the right can be. In fact, I can turn off the overlays as well. Next, I'm going to select my two point lights and I'm going to move these around, increase the power and change the colors as well. Okay, so the scene's looking a bit more vibrant now. I can select the diamond and rotate this on the Z axis and see how those lights interact with the diamond's material. And I can then make a few changes to the material properties as well. So now we've got to this point, I'm going to switch back over to cycles and just see how it looks. As you can see, quite different to EV in the way that it handles certain materials and lighting. Something else we can also do is select the camera and from the camera tab, we can adjust the focal length. So for example, you could bring this down if you wanted a wider angle. You can also change the type from perspective to orthographic, essentially removing any sense of perspective. Very useful if you wanted to create something like an isometric scene, for example. We could also enable depth of field by selecting this checkbox here. And if we expand these options down, we can adjust the f-stop. So the lower the f-stop, the more background blur you're going to get. And you can also manually adjust the focal distance as well. You can also select the eyedropper tool and you can click on an object in your scene, like the diamond, for example. And this will always be the focal point for this particular camera. And there we go, that wraps up part seven. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at rendering with EV versus Cycles. So if you did enjoy this one, you can always subscribe for more, ring the bell for notifications, and I'll see you in part eight.